Hey, 42 here. North Korea, Iran, Syria, Russia and Ukraine, China, India and Pakistan. These are a list of the most pressing flashpoints of the last year. When political, economic or social tensions reach boiling point in an area, that region is declared a flashpoint by various states. This means it has the potential to erupt into war or another kind of disaster. It seems that every six months or so, yet another flashpoint is added to the exhaustive global watch list. And of course, the most devastating way any of these flashes can go bang is by descending into nuclear war. It's likely that America would either be the instigator or recipient of that first nuclear blow, given its position as the big daddy defender of Western democracy. But even if it doesn't instigate a nuclear strike, as soon as it happens elsewhere in the world, you can be fairly certain that the good old USA is going to get involved fairly quickly. This makes the nuclear football the most important briefcase in the world. This one piece of apparel could quite literally decide the future of humanity, but it's shrouded in so much secrecy. So how does the nuclear football work? And how exactly do a briefcase and a biscuit launch a nuclear weapon? Whenever you see the President of the United States away from the White House, whether he be visiting peach farmers in Georgia or attending a banquet at Buckingham Palace, you will always notice something following him. More specifically, someone carrying something. Wherever he travels, he must always be accompanied by an aide-de-camp, a senior assistant to the president who has passed the most stringent of all background security checks, a process codenamed Yankee White. This aide will always be carrying a mysterious black briefcase, and he will guard it with his life. Whilst on duty, he is not permitted to ever let it leave his sight. In fact, it is literally tied to the aide's wrist, and if the president goes for a run, his aide must jog behind him, briefcase in hand. It must always be kept on the same elevator the president is on, and in the same helicopter. It is named the football after a Cold War nuclear attack plan that was codenamed Dropkick. This is no ordinary briefcase. The entire thing weighs a hefty 20 kilograms. Inside the black leather outer sits a thick, reinforced aluminium case manufactured by an American-Japanese firm, Zero Halliburton. Their cases are known for being tough and water and dust tight, which is really important because you wouldn't want a spilt cup of coffee leaking inside this particular briefcase and interfering with the critical electronics and documents. But what is inside it, you ask? There are four items in the football, everything the president would need to coordinate and order the launch of a nuclear warhead. The first item is a black book containing every option available to the US military. These plans cover all bases, from launching a small tactical preemptive strike all the way to a full-on nuclear Armageddon. Obviously, what these plans are is highly classified, but each one is intricately detailed inside the black book, giving the commander-in-chief the information, such as expected casualties, likely repercussions, timings, etc., that he needs to make the optimal decision. Although Jimmy Carter thought that the plans were so complex that he asked for a much simplified summary of each to be added to the book. These dumbed-down versions are reportedly little more than cartoon sketches and one-line descriptions. Other sources say that the simplified version is laid out like a Denny's breakfast menu, and the president simply has to choose a selection of items from two columns to arrive at a customised plan of attack. The second item is a book listing all the classified locations of the US military installations as well as bunkers and other safe places where the president can be taken in case of an emergency. The third item is a manila folder with 10 pages describing how to use the emergency broadcast system. Established in 1997, this allows the president to directly address every US citizen at the same time via TV channels, radio and mobile phone communications. It is often used to warn citizens of tornadoes and flash floods in affected areas. But it would, of course, be used to address the entire nation in the event of a nuclear attack.
the fourth and final thing inside the briefcase is the most important of all. The biscuit. No, it's not in case the president wants a quick snack whilst unleashing a nuclear Armageddon upon the world. The biscuit is a credit card size laminated card that simply has a vertical column of codes printed on it. These are known as the gold codes and are essentially the president's password to enable him and only him to launch nuclear weapons. In reality, they are not a password per se, but a way for the president to, without any question of doubt, identify himself as the president when he contacts the Joint Chiefs of Staff to give the order to strike, but more on that in a minute. It could quite literally be the end of the world if these codes fell into the wrong hands, so there are naturally some prudent security measures in place. According to some sources, the codes are changed every single day. Apparently, the NSA generates a unique set of random codes daily and distributes them to the only four recipients that will need them in the case of a nuclear attack. The White House, the Pentagon, US Strategic Command, and Takamo. Or take charge and move out. This last one is a Boeing E6 Mercury constantly in flight. It acts as an airborne relay station to take the president's attack commands and distribute them over encrypted airwaves to military installations all around the US in seconds. It is in place just in case an enemy nuclear strike takes out all the land-based broadcast stations. A new biscuit is created for the president every day with that day's unique gold codes. As an additional security step, there are more codes printed on the biscuit than are needed. Most of the codes are decoys. Only after inauguration is the president taught precisely where the real codes are located on the card and which ones to ignore. This is so if the biscuit is physically stolen from the president, the thief would be unable to use it because he would have no idea which of the codes are real and which are fake. A simple yet elegant solution. In 2000, during the Clinton administration, Bill's aide lost the biscuit and didn't tell anyone for almost three months. Back then, the codes were only changed once every four months. Worse still, officials repeatedly asked the aide if he had the codes, which is done regularly just to make sure. And each time he'd said something along the lines of, yeah, sure, they're right here in this briefcase. When in reality, he knew they were not and had no idea where they were. It's been suspected, but never confirmed by insiders, that it was actually Bill Clinton himself who lost the biscuit and his aide was just covering up for him. But it's not the only time the biscuit has gone awry. 39th president Jimmy Carter infamously lost his when his suit was sent to the dry cleaners with the biscuit still in the jacket pocket. After Reagan was shot during an attempted assassination in 1981, the hospital staff, in a panic to save his life, stripped all of his clothes and belongings and threw them into a plastic bag, which was shoved into a corner and left there. The biscuit was later found to be in that plastic bag. But how do the football and the biscuit actually work? What would the president have to do if he decided to blow up his least favorite despot? Well, for a start, I'm sorry to say there is no actual nuclear button. Presidents have historically said that they have their finger on the button as a scare tactic and a powerful campaigning message. Because let's face it, it sounds much more threatening than I've got a briefcase and a credit card and I'm not afraid to use them. The finger on the button analogy is so powerful that it has also been used as a political attack tool. Why do you think Hillary kept on espousing lines such as Trump shouldn't have his finger on the button? Because it makes him sound like a madman with his finger literally hovering above a button all day. And if he doesn't get his KFC on time, he might just press it. When the reality is completely different. As we will now discover, it's not quite as simple or easy as that. And there are, of course, some safeguards in place. So then. If the president decides he would like to annihilate a city or two, this is exactly what he is trained to do. He notifies the aide of his destructive desires and he is quickly taken to the nearest private room. The football is opened up and the biscuit is broken. It is encased in a plastic cover which the president must break open to see the codes. The president would then consult the black book to decide on which plan of attack he would like. 
The football itself, however, is not just a glorified briefcase. It contains a reliable, long-wave communication gear, hence the two aerials that can be seen protruding from the top. This very low-frequency radio equipment has a direct and secure link to the National Military Command Center inside the Pentagon. This allows the President to phone the Joint Chiefs of Staff from anywhere in the world. He can, if he chooses, consult the Joint Chiefs of Staff, or any other advisors he chooses for that matter, to get their opinion on his plan of attack, who may suggest an alternative approach, or to scale it up or down. They may even choose to resign on the spot as a form of protest against the President's impending plan. But it doesn't matter, because the final decision to launch nuclear weapons, and exactly how and how many, is ultimately the President's call and nobody else's. The Pentagon must respect and carry out whatever he instructs. Once a plan has been settled on, an officer in the Pentagon's war room sends the President a challenge code. This may be something along the lines of Oscar Bravo. There is only one correct response to this challenge, and it is the gold code printed on a certain location on the biscuit, known to the President as we discussed earlier. The President then uses the football to send the correct code back to the war room. If the war room is satisfied that they have received the correct response, and are indeed receiving orders from the President and no one else, they prepare an encrypted message. This message is the length of a tweet, and includes authentication codes needed to launch the missiles, and details of the attack including the target or targets, the severity, and the time to launch. This secure message is broadcast throughout the chain of command. This chain begins with the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staffs, passes through Strategic Command, and ends with the military personnel in the appropriate ICBM silos or nuclear submarines, whose job it actually is to launch the missiles. The staff here will open a safe that contains a card with the nuclear authentication codes on, which is essentially a password to unlock the launch system. The safe code is compared to the one broadcast by the Pentagon, and only if it matches will they proceed with the launch. The code is entered into the computer, and then the final failsafe is initiated. The Two Keys System This is a simple yet robust system that ensures no single rogue soldier can launch a missile by himself. There are five crew members on board each nuclear submarine and inside each underground silo. Each person has their own unique key. To launch the missile, they all insert their keys into separate, pre-designated keyholes in the computer system. But only two of the five keys are needed to initiate a launch. So, even if three crew members refuse to insert their keys, the launch will still go ahead, but not if four refuse to do so. On top of this, there is one final failsafe. The missile will only launch if two keys are inserted at the exact same time, turned and held there for at least five seconds. The keyholes are spring-loaded, so failing to hold the key in place will abort the launch. However, the keyholes are sufficiently spaced apart so that one person, with both arms outstretched, cannot insert and turn two keys at the same time. Another simple, yet elegant solution. And that's it. The missile will now begin its trajectory towards its programmed target. From the moment the President first opens the nuclear football, it will now be anywhere from two to five minutes in the future. That is how quickly this rigorously practiced routine would play out in real life. Once those two keys are turned and the missile is launched, there is no going back. There is no system in place for the president to change his mind mid-flight. World War III will have just begun, and most likely, the end of humanity as we know it. But until that happens, it would be wise to make sure your personal security is as strong as the President's by using Dashlane, who have kindly sponsored today's video. The best way to protect yourself against hackers, spammers, and other online threats is by using the leading password manager and all-in-one security suite, Dashlane 
who will store all of your passwords in a super safe way without ever having access to them or allowing anyone but you to view them. Dashlane creates a strong and unique password for all of your online accounts and also fills them so you never have to click forgot password ever again. And you don't have to sweat about the extremely rare chance that Dashlane could be breached because Dashlane safely stores and decrypts your data on your local device only using your master password. This means that Dashlane never has access to your personal data and any hacker would only see random noise. Dashlane also auto fills your credit card information whilst online shopping so you can make purchases without even having to fetch your wallet. Dashlane has a built-in VPN to encrypt your data and keep your online activity anonymous. Best of all, it works on any device. Whether you're protecting classified state secrets or classified videos of your cat, there is no better way to make your online world as safe as a nuclear bunker than by using Dashlane. Dashlane goes the extra mile by alerting you if any of your accounts or data are breached. It also has a dark web monitoring system that will immediately let you know if your personal information appears on the dark web, where it can be seen by hackers or spammers. From my experience, Dashlane is the best, all bases covered, security and time-saving tool out there. And if you visit my unique promo link in the description, you can get a free premium trial of Dashlane for 30 days. Plus, if you enter 42 at checkout, you will get 10% of Dashlane Premium. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out using the link below.